Jennifer. <laughs> I just added 140 new team members to the reminders to this. So we might have a few people, Sharon, that hop on. Yay. It's kind of last minute. All right. Well, we've got Alyssa, who is fairly newly engaged, let's say. And is it Zach? I'm sorry. I was. Yeah. Zach, yeah. yeah. So um, we can, we can uh, give some tips to new team members today. That's what we're going to do in the beginning. And then um, Doug and Jennifer are going to talk social media. And Why Gabby, me? And Gabby can bring her question because you asked for Jennifer to come back. Well, because I need a, I did a reel, Jennifer. I did a reel. He reeled you in too. Well, <laughs> good job. I got to go find it so I can see it. But I did notice, like, you know, yeah. like what I was focusing you know, on. Was really good morning. Um, what I was focusing on. My, my words that I typed were covering it. So I put them way up high. And then when it went to my profile on Instagram, it cut it off. So I guess it's a different, it's a smaller picture on the profile than the reel. So you yes. have to be careful of going too high up on a reel. Well, yeah, you got to learn it, right? And be able to watch, it's like continue watching reel or something like that. And then you can yeah, that's very true. Cause the reels, just like the stories, they're kind of like a, a tall aspect yeah. ratio. Whereas the actual Instagram newsfeed is a square aspect ratio. So. so I've been watching a little bit of reels now because I think I get it because I'm actually like, I, I love watching TikToks because I think it's yeah. just because it's the funniest thing ever. But reels are kind of like the Instagram TikTok, right? Oh, yeah, it's exactly that. That is Instagram's oh, okay. version of TikTok. So that's why you can take if you're going to do reels just save your reel and go post it on TikTok or vice versa. If you prefer TikTok, create your TikToks and then just go post it in your Instagram reels. You can, so that way you're repurposing the same thing. Okay, so yes, Sharon, I'll have more of like questions for Jennifer. And I know Gabby had a great question during our coaching that we can bring up and everybody can discuss a little bit too. Yes, absolutely. Okay, well, let's talk to the, the newest people in the room first. So I want the people who are not so new to think of at least one tip for the new people. I'm going to go over um, a couple things that are on our blog, just so that you know that it's there. And, um, and so you can appreciate some of the things that we have that are just different than um, some of the other resources. So this is Transformers. Our team is called Team Transformers, because we're transforming people's lives and you can read different things. But um, I wanted to focus first on our bullet point list. Um, if I could, I don't know why that's not working. Click on bullet. I'll click on the actual bullet. Okay, that's not working. Huh. Um, so I can maybe pull up one somewhere. <laughs> Let's see. Darn, yeah. that's Dougie. Hey, there it is, came up. <gasps> oh my gosh. It's just slow. Okay. Oh, it's not used to me clicking a million times. Okay, so um, just to reassure you guys, you are in the best place ever. Um, Doug and I have been with the company for almost 22 years. It's coming up the anniversary. And um, Juice Plus has never done us wrong. They always dot their I's, cross their T's. Everything they do is great. They're very forward thinking. So Juice Plus is the largest selling nutritional product in the capsule in the world. How amazing is that? The most researched nutritional product in a capsule in the world. And so you can even ask Siri, what's the most researched nutritional product? Um, these are all things that make Juice Plus different than other things out there in the market. Okay, it's got a food label, meaning it says nutrition facts instead of supplement facts. It's not a vitamin. It has vitamins and minerals and more nutrients than a vitamin supplement. It's got like thousands of nutrients um, in just an apple. So it's more like hundreds of thousands of nutrients when you have all that Juice Plus has to offer. Gluten-free, it's been gluten-free since I started, which was before like the whole gluten-free movement. So that shows you how far ahead our company is in their thinking. Um, it's vegan, uh, it's NSF certified. So that means that everything that says on the label is in the product and vice versa. And it's sports certified. So if you're in college or um, an Olympic athlete or major league, you don't have to worry about banned substances and they accept NSF sports certification. Okay. Um, a lot of products out there, but some of them say not safe for children, 
Oh, participants can now see my screen, it just said. I hope you guys could see my screen before. Um, and then, uh, you know, it might say not safe for children, not safe for pregnant women, juice plus is safe for the whole family. They say womb to tomb, okay? And so um, that's why a lot of doctors recommend it too. Children get Juice Plus for free ages four through 18, also undergraduate in college, which is pretty amazing um, with an adult sponsor. So there's millions of, of children and young adults getting Juice Plus for free. Um, doctors recommend it mostly because of the research that's behind it, you know? And um, so as far as the business, so now some of the business stuff comes after this uh, information about the product. Uh, we have a small product line. Like we don't have like, a whole bunch of products, like a whole catalog. We have just a few products so that you're just talking out of one side of your mouth, very focused, um, talking about getting more plants in your diet, meeting the needs of servings of fruits and vegetables, things like that, getting the nutrients you need. So whether that's with the micronutrients of Juice Plus, the capsules or chewables, or the shake, the macronutrients with the plant-based shake, or the plant-based omega or the tower garden. It's all helping bridge the gap to get more plants in our diet. So it should be a very simple message for you um, and not like a bunch of things like oils, shampoos, toilet paper, whatever. It's just about plants, okay? And then we have um, a consumable product. And so people run out, you know, they run out of shake or they run out of capsules or chewables, so then they reorder. So our job is really to help educate them as to why they would want to be on Juice Plus and then to keep keep maintaining them to understanding why they would spend that money, you know? And once they're locked in, they're pretty locked in. We have like a very good reorder program, like 85% or more people reorder. So, um, and it's in the computer and you just move it around as they, um, as they need to, you know, I always say, how's your supply going, you know, and then, oh, I still have some, okay, I'm going to delay it for a month. I'll call you back. I make it real simple, not stressing them out. Okay. Then, um, leverage of time. When you have a team, that's when you really enter the thousands of dollars a month. When you just have your own customers, you might have some team who do a little bit, like a couple of orders each. That's not going to get you to the thousands of dollars, but having a lot of team and having team who, get on board with the mission and, and feel like it's more of a responsibility to share Juice Plus um, because of what they've learned, then you're going to have leverage of time. There'll be people talking about Juice Plus while you're doing whatever you're doing, whether you're at the beach or whether you're talking about Juice Plus, there's there's like an army of people out there and that, that gives you leverage of time. And time is really the most awesome part of this business, the flexibility being able to work from anywhere, you know, whether it's your, with your phone and your mouth, you know, that's really all you need for this business. And then we're part of the wellness industry, which continues to grow. People want to be well, um, and they, they appreciate feeling well, and they appreciate quality of life. Um, as far as the business, it's $52 to start. Hopefully many of you took um, advantage of the blitz and didn't have to pay that. But next year it's a, a renewable $52, which isn't a lot. It's, it's, Kind of a funny thing because it's a dollar a month or a dollar a week to have your own virtual franchise um and the company has been around for over 50 years so they're not a fly-by-night company um stable and lasting which is awesome and so we we go over that a little bit on friends and family zooms or calls to help you get a good launch to your business um if like you have relatives that you can invite to that we we reassure them that isn't it great that the person has become a part of our 50 year old company. Um, and we're in over 23 countries. We've done over $16 billion in sales, very mission driven. Um, it's not all dog eat dog or anything. It's all about inspiring healthy living. It's not a buyer's club. You don't have quotas. You don't have to have inventory. There's no territorial restrictions. Your positions, your commission positions, once you get there, they're permanent. And then there's a benefits package for um, when you move up in the company. So I wanted to make sure you guys saw that um, and we'll entertain any questions from any of the new people about the um, bullet point list, but then we'll, we'll give tips to the new people. So we want to start off with that. So any questions about what I just talked about from anybody new or anybody who's been around, it's okay. No, 
Okay, so you can access that on gotransformers.net. It's just something that kind of, for me, summarizes what makes Juice Plus different from all the other businesses, all the other products out there. So if you can kind of grab hold of a couple of those things here and there, it's going to be good for you. All right, so we're going to go to tips. Hey, Sharon. Yes. I was going to say that that uh, go trans go transformers.net that that blog article with those that list that's a really good thing to have on your phone. There's been times when Sharon and I just do use that as a whole presentation. You can yeah. literally put that on the screen and it just reminds you. Sometimes when I have to talk about Juice Plus and I don't know what the other people are going to say, like maybe I'm on a panel or something on a Zoom, I'll just get that list out because no matter what somebody else talks about, there's still going to be plenty of items left for me to talk about. So it's really good to kind of know those things because then you just have all this stuff on the top of your head. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, I know we have a, new, a lot of new people and they may not all be on here right now, but we're streaming also. Uh, and you guys can always tag people on your team too later. Let's hear some good tips because we were all new at one point, right? What did you do or what do you think they should do to be successful um, launching their business? So we'll start with Nalani because she's always thinking. She's always ready, right, Nalani? Oh, Jennifer. Okay. All righty. So the, the, I think... Those five things, I'm sorry, I'm like a, I'm like a broken record um, to be connected, to stay connected, to be teachable, to be willing to do the work, whatever that means to you, to be hungry for success, whatever that means to you, and to use the system. And they sound simple, um, but if you ask yourself every day and you go down that list, you know, each one and honestly ask yourself where you are, you'll find out where you are, why you are where you are and why you're going where you're going. Okay, one more time on the list so they, they have it for sure. Okay, number one, to be coachable, teachable and, you know, not try to reinvent the wheel and get too creative. Number two, to be willing to do the work, whether you feel like it. Sometimes I don't feel like answering the phone or jumping on a call, but to be willing to do the work. That, that's what that means. Um, and number three, to be hungry for your success, whatever that means to you. Nobody's going to push you to do anything. Um, you have your own why. And, but if you're really hungry for it, you'll be coachable and you'll do the other things as well. And then to be connected, to stay connected. And that seems to be a challenge for most um, because whatever reason, we all have life, um, but to stay connected to your upline and using Voxer consistently. Uh, and that's, that's number four. And then number five, to be, what's number five? To use a system. Once again, don't, uh, try to recreate the wheel to use the system and ask your upline what that system is. Um, Voxer is a part of the system. You know, for us, friends and family call is a part of the system. Um, there's so many things that are part of the system. Having your, having your customers on, uh, on, the, on Facebook on our, in our group, the um, Simple Changes to Better Health. That's a powerful part of the system because it helps keep your customer engaged and reminds them why they ordered it in the first place and they'll be a customer for life. So all those, those are the five things that I'm, I'm singing as my mantra these days. I love it. Love it, love it. Does anybody have any questions about Nalani's list or any comments on that? I just think the list is so key. I've written it down like everywhere. I made her send it to me in Voxer. I've got it written in my DMO planner because that's really what I'm trying to teach uh, new people as they come on because you can see the people that come in and if they don't do those five things, they might stay around for a little bit, but they're not gonna see any real success. And you can tell the people that do all of those five things, the ones that are coachable, the ones that jump on these lunch and learns, maybe not every time, but consistently, and they're plugged into the team, they're using the system, and then you just watch them build their business. So it's 
yeah, those are some of my favorite things. So thank you, Dr. Nalani, because if you were not on here, I was going to make sure they got said. <laughs> um, awesome. well, I have a tip. Yes. Okay. Go ahead. So this is for all of you out there who might still be working at the same time as doing your Juice Plus business, because a lot of us still do. In fact, I still do. I, I'm still into software engineering. So for me, time blocking is the most important thing. I have to, I need to plan my week. So I want to know who I'm going to talk to because you've got your list. And then I block out an hour every single day. And that is my juice plus hour. And I'm very intentionally making those connections. That's not when I'm posting on social media. That's not when I'm consuming social media. That's when I'm doing my income producing activity, which is introducing people to juice plus following up with people from juice that you've talked to about juice plus in the past following up with your customers and following up with your teammates. Those things that we teach the two by two by two by two, then that's what I make sure that you always have that blocked off. And if it's on your calendar, you'll do it. If it's not on your calendar, you won't do it. So that's how I do that while still maintaining a job at the same time. I love that, Jennifer. I had something to say too. Um, another thing that you can kind of integrate with all of those five things, plus what Jennifer just said about time blocking and I think it's to always know your why. Like, why did you do this in the first place? Hold on to that because you made that decision for a reason and you want to share with people. So tap into those whys and that'll keep you connected. That'll keep you hungry. That'll keep you willing. That'll keep you coachable. You know, that I feel like knowing why is going to keep you um, involved as well in doing those things. You know what I noticed, um, and I was telling this to a lady, that when it's the people who come in, and I've noticed this, especially in the last couple of months, and there's one on here, and I'm going to call her out. They come in a little bit shy, a little bit not comfortable, don't want to feel like they're being pushy, really kind of scared. They get promoted. They get promoted because it's so coachable. Claudia, you know I'm talking about you. <laughs> I mean, she did the madness game and she got promoted. She's been promoted twice. She's a QSC now. Awesome. Yeah. That's and those of us who are, are confident, <laughs> quote unquote. Um, and, and I find when I talk to people who are in sales, it makes me really nervous when someone says, oh, I'm really good at sales. You know, I'm really good at sales because you can't bring that mentality to what we do. We're not focused on it. I mean, let's not, let's not kid ourselves. If nobody buys, we don't get paid. So we are in a sales company and it's a very reputable um, industry. Um, it's just that if you're really good at it and you, you can't take those sales whatever it is that they are <laughs> and bring them over here and do well with them and because um it's that sales mindset yeah you're right jennifer sales mindset is usually um equal non-coachable usually equals non-coachable because they could you know why because they're successful at what they do and if you're successful at what you do you try to bring that into this new arena um, but you're successful at that, but you don't know this. And so I had to learn that. Because yeah. I was going to be a sales coordinator. I was going to be a national marketing director in two years. It was like, yeah, why? You just watch. <laughs> right. This, this business, we're not born, you know, Juice Plus partners. We have to learn it. And it takes personal growth and, and really plugging into the community and the people so you can learn how to do it best. That's the I mean, teachable part. Know what I just realized from Nalani saying that and then Jennifer saying that I had this quick moment where I had to like think like, man, I'm always recommending that um, fanatical prospecting book, which is like a sales book, but it's actually not a sales book. It's a prospecting book. It's about finding people and keeping your pipeline full. And then what we do with those people that we're talking to is different than what we would do if we were selling, you know, copy machines or something. Yeah. So I That's have a great um, book. Oh, it's so good. Uh, I have um, advice. I, first of all, I'm just so happy that um, 
you guys are like saying things that I would want to say too. And I love it. You guys, I mean, there's, so I think you're saying great things because they're like things I like too. <laughs> but um, on Milani's list, you know, the coachable, willing to work, hungry, connected to the team, use the system. Um, that is critically important. I want to maybe let's, let's even go kind of next level. When we say connected to the team though, there's some people that kind of hang around the team. So let's, and, and I think it's important. So now, now I'm talking to people that want to move forward and really ramp up their business. Okay. So there's, there's, we were just talking to Gabby about this, you know, how, um, no matter what, we're always talking about the campfire and you want people to feel comfortable and just be around the campfire. There's no pressure or anything like that. Um, but if you're somebody who wants to really do this as a, as a business and make a significant full-time income, then you do have to like be very connected, but not just hanging around. Like um, our, our president of the company says, you got to find a buddy. So you can't just watch lunch and learns oh that's pretty good it's probably better if you have somebody you're kind of working with you know like so if jennifer was in the outer banks and just all alone and never talked to anybody it would get a little bit lonely you know although she is uh, like a computer programmer person so she could probably handle it more than some but um she used to like a cubicle or something <laughs> No, but um, some people feel isolated. Then you get a few no's. And next thing you know, you're just, you start what Brene Brown's calls the, the uh, SFD, the shitty first draft. Our mind explains things with these terrible stories. You start to think, well, I'm not very good at this. Other people are better. I can't talk to people as good as Nalani or Claudia or Michelle. Well, you don't even know how they talk to people. You've never even been there. They're having the same struggles. They get just as many no's as you do. OK, but since you're not on the phone saying, hey, Michelle, how's it going? And not that she would be everybody's buddy, but you're going to find some natural buddies in the business. So find a buddy, stay connected. And that's really important. And then the other thing is if um, when you first start out, try to like really get into it for at least a certain season, because if you go up like this, it's a lot more. It's kind of like, um, you know, if you ever help somebody that's pushing a car and you see some push, people pushing and they get it going and then you come along and you start pushing the car it's really easy it's almost like you're just walking along pushing the car but when that car is stopped and you start pushing it it's like oh, it takes everything you got to get it going and that's what momentum is like okay so make sure you grind a little bit in the beginning um and you're gonna really have a lot more fun as you go along How about some more tips? Yeah, I'll call on the one. Um, Is that me? Let's ask Claudia. Claudia, you've had some good success. I think you're in a position to give some tips to brand new people. So mine was. Um, mine was what Dr. Nalani said, and um, she's been my mentor from the beginning. So uh, stay connected. That's like my biggest one, being connected, even though in the beginning, I feel like yeah. I wasn't really producing. Nanette, too, Aunt Julie. Yeah. Nanette, too. Yeah. Yeah. Nanette's yeah. been. Yeah, I think that um, the Must fact be. that Claudia would call you her mentor indicates a different relationship, which, um, I mean, it almost tempts me to maybe say, we need to find a mentor in the business, you know? A buddy's right. cool too, because a buddy, you have no guilt about calling at all, or, you know, just spending the day with them all day, you know? But um, that's great, Claudia, that's great advice. Right, I mean, and also the madness games have been, you know, just been connected, plugged in, listening to the teachings, you know, hey, there's an event, you know, a Zoom event, register I'm, I'm there you know so i absorbed everything and now it's ready i'm ready to push out and um i'm not perfect of course but it's it's helped me along to be that connected in the beginning so always be connected and keep your box strong <laughs> and claudia what what room are you in there it's a zoom background <laughs> i'm in the oh, i was gonna room. say this really some <laughs> really cool lighting i was no, i was digging your decorating <laughs> i found it on on a <laughs> It's a, it's a Zoom background. 
Well, let's switch to social media because we're like halfway through the hour um, and it's still going to apply to new people. We could start off with new people posts and new people don't do this, do this, you know, kind of stuff. Um, let's first, because we have new people, um, put in the chat, what do we usually use for social media? That way we know what we're even talking about. Like for me, I mostly do Facebook, but sometimes I'll, I'll end up in Instagram. Sometimes I'll end up on Twitter, sometimes LinkedIn. Those are not my favorites. So put the one that you actually do use the most. Okay, in the chat, you guys. Okay, so Facebook has been the first for a lot of people. Um, Jimmy's Instagram. Gabby, you want to do that to everybody. Hers, Facebook and Instagram. Claudia, Facebook. Sonali, Instagram and Snapchat. Uh, Patrick, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, people want to get more comfortable with TikTok. Okay, what else? We're missing. Can I ask a, can I ask a TikTok question? And some of you TikTokers can let me know, because to me, TikToks are like, you know, fail videos and dogs that talk and stuff. And it's the same reason I actually got off of Snapchat because I felt like all the posts were just, it's like a joke. Everything's a big joke. But is there, a, am I just in the wrong portion of so, TikTok? So with TikTok, what I find is once you start liking things, once you start like interacting with certain things that pertain to something that you like or whatever, then you start, it starts to like some algorithm program. Like I'm only getting things now. Like I don't get the funny stuff anymore. I get like other things. Like it's all really? pertaining to what you start when you hit the like button or you follow people that kind of turns into like, you, okay. can, you can be on a health TikTok If you just start liking things that have to do with health, you can be on a, I don't know, a dog TikTok. Like one of my friends have her whole TikToks all dog funnies because you like things okay. that are with dogs. You can be mixed too if you like them both, but I feel like it right. always creates this like something you would like. It's kind of like Pandora. When you hit Pandora, the like button, it starts coming out with songs like that. Yeah. Like that. And is I'd there like any to hear from 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 Gwen because Gwen is an expert on Instagram, I think, and now she's going over to TikTok. So what can you share with us? No, I'm not going to TikTok. I'm just experimenting with TikTok because uh, I follow people who are making it work for them. So, <laughs> but it's just another way for me to build relationships with the younger generation, really, because that's why I'm in Snapchat, because I have customers and prospects that only communicate on Snapchat. So I, that's why I'm on all of them. That's how I pester some of my teammates because they're on Snapchat. It's my only form of communication. So TikTok, I'm just learning, and I think I only have like five posts and like 20 people following me. So it is not anything to, to be, I'm not making money on it, so I'm not making it part of my life every day. It, it's just you, like a fun thing. Question though, you are making money on Instagram, right? From Instagram. Yes, I am making, I get customers and prospects and teammates and all that from Facebook and Instagram. Yeah. It's just all about the follow-up though. You've got to go, when they start communicating in your post, take it offline. Don't do all the communicating in your post. Go and build that relationship so they're not afraid to communicate with you when they have problems. So my husband is really good at face-to-face -face, and now I have, I call him a twin tornado. <laughs> and one of them has joined my team and she's in Alaska and the other one is local here but they have taken 10 hours of my time in the last two days because their mouths just do this on the phone. So I've got, <laughs> they're great, they're awesome. And, and they're, one of them's a Facebooker and an Instagrammer and the other one's not. So I'm gonna be communicating with Alaska on Facebook. Hmm. So that's, it's just how I do it. I just keep track of everybody that way. It's my best way to communicate with about 90% of my customers and team is on social media. Would you say that's a good way to, to start an international team? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> I have a girl in Australia. I mean, how, how else are you going to meet them other than this way? I mean, I'm, I'm not flying anywhere right now. So <laughs> this is the only way. And I've never been across the pond. So, you know, the only way I'm going to meet people is on social media. So I'm in a bunch of different groups. I, I go split off and I'm in my MS groups. I'm in healthy living groups, all of that stuff. So just start communicating and build relationships. So when you're new, um, how often do you think you should post about Juice Plus? Let's just get that one out there for the new people. Um, let's go to Not a lot. Not a lot, Not right? Lot. Right. Not a lot. Don't make it a sales page. People don't want to see you selling stuff on your page. Live it out loud. That's it. Live it out loud. Yeah. Every day I show my smoothie every day, but I don't, you know, like this is what's in all the capsules. I don't do that. I got told I was talking too much. So just, <laughs> <laughs> so just less is more, less is more. They want to see you not all the other stuff. So um, when she says live out loud, um, we like to say live the mission. The mission, if you can just remember the mission is to inspire healthy living around the world. So you're just, you're the example. You're using the products. You could just post about how you and maybe your family interact with the products, things like that, or what it's giving you energy to do or um, or how relieved you are to feel that you're getting more fruits and vegetables, you know, anything about it all around it, but not directly. You don't want to be a salesperson on social media or you'll get blocked and people don't really want to see that. But you, you know, you just got to create curiosity without using the name. Oh, I need to probably get that. I'm going to show you guys um, some examples that are on the freedomrevolution.com. Um, this isn't a total open part of the website. But um, when you're new, when you're new, you're under the startup section. This part is more developed under the, the whole website. So these are just examples. These people are all just living life, but they might be showing um, healthy eating or healthy ideas, like even that lunchbox. Um, Michelle's got her smoothie on her way uh, to an early birthday party, which means birthday foods. Oh, she's going to have her smoothie first. Um, so, you know, and then kids, of course, are always great uh, to take pictures of them doing things. I think Michelle was doing kale chips in this video here. Um, this person's happy that their complexion is better after being on Juice Plus. Um, and sometimes we don't say Juice Plus, we say one simple change. And then when we do a presentation, we, we call it a one simple change presentation because it, it really is like the one simple change that's really made the most difference for many of us. Um, or you could do a thankful post. You could say, I'm so thankful my friend, Dr. Nalani, recommended um, this one simple change for me. I feel so much better. And you get, that creates curiosity. What is it? What is it? Oh, I'll tell you. you know, I'll tell you later or I'll message you. So then real conversations happen in Messenger or direct message. Um, so these are just examples on here. And there's a PDF that can be printed. So... Um, we can send that out actually. So there's just some examples. There's under the startup part of the website. Let me see if I can get back there. Where am I? Okay, here we go. Um, there's just a few examples and there's some teaching about social media. So when you're new, you want to go to the startup section of the Freedom Revolution. I've already signed in. But this is where you would go for training, thefreedomrevolution.com, besides, you know, your sponsor and leader who know, don't ever think that you're bugging us or we don't have enough time for you, anything like that. Um, we want to be able to answer your questions. It takes like 30 to 60 days for you to really get in the groove. And so we want to be the wind, wind beneath your wings during that time. Here's the getting started um, checklist that if you're not familiar with yet, this is where you could go, thefreedomrevolution.com, getting started or startup, make sure you go there, shows you how to place your order, shows you how to get to the first commission level, which is really just like three trios, super simple, but you don't want to miss the first 10 days because that's a $100 bonus. So make sure you get with your person to talk about that. Love these key product videos. If I click here, all the links are on one page. 
and you could just watch these. This is good homework for you to watch the videos and think of people and write people down um, and then uh, make a list of them. Here's some information on what to say. We can maybe come back to that, but here's social media. So there's a video and um, talks about branding yourself, uh, what types of, of things you might be interested in, three types of posts to focus on, education, entertainment, engagement. So engagement is like having people comment back. So these posts, you know, that you just ask a question. Uh, okay, here's one. I'm really getting into self-development lately. What's your favorite resource? So that kind of brings people out of the woodwork to answer you. Like people like answering and giving their opinion and that'll give you more exposure. And then if you do do a post that includes Juice Plus or One Simple Change or the Tower Garden, then you're gonna already have kind of um, got people, oh, what is it called? I don't know, but <laughs> primed, I guess, to see your other posts. Um, so I'm gonna stop talking and you guys could talk about maybe what first post you would recommend. So Jennifer, I'm gonna go to you. What's a good first post? Um, I really like thankful posts for the mm. first posts and just what I always coach people is do not blast. I don't even put the words juice plus in my post and I only post either about juice plus or the tower garden once a week. And I just make sure that all of my posts are going into one of my four content circles, which is family, fun, health, and wealth. And wealth is like personal development as well. So you just make sure that you're balanced in all of that, then you're not going to be considered so salesy. Cause I definitely have some friends in other companies that it's literally a post every single day about their products. And that gets a little old. I want to see more about them. Yes. Posting about yourself um, just makes people more attracted to you. So that's the thing, you know, they want to see your life. I was just telling that to Gabby, like, wouldn't everybody want to see her going live saying, um, Gabby update in Michigan, you know, she just moved there. She's got like this whole other life. Wouldn't they like to be updated? So same with anybody on your list, they would love to just see you talking about an update on your family or, or what you're, um, what you're most excited about, things like that. Okay, so let's hear some more good tips about social media for new people. Yeah, I um I just did a really good post yesterday. Um, and one of my uh, our customers, she actually lives down the street from me, but she was moving to a new location. So she wanted the shipment to be shipped to my house and she'd come and pick it up. So she came and picked it up and I said, you know, you're not going to leave here with this Juice Plus package without opening it right here in front of me. You know, so I took my keys, we opened it up and she just saw just the colors and the vibrancy, like the, the package is amazing, right? So I took the moment to watch she was holding the package to snap some pictures and I posted that moment on my Instagram. So it was like an authentic joy, happiness. And we spent maybe 30 minutes just talking about the product. She went as far as to sign up as a new partner now. She wants to order for her son. She wants her first order to be under her name. So it was just like a whole event, just a whole unboxing. You know, on YouTube, there's like this whole uh, unboxing videos. People literally yeah. make videos just of unboxing something, right? So to see this, just the color and the vibrancy of the Juice Plus in the photo, it automatically kind of catches your attention. So I think those are good posts. And then in my comment, I kind of talk around the product, just talk around, you know, healthy lifestyle, the convenience of it. Look at this happy smile from this product. And I think that those are good posts too, when you can have someone unboxing it and kind of sharing that experience, um, that, that was amazing. So. Yeah, I think that's a little tip that I can give. It's kind of capturing the unboxing of the package. I love that. Yeah, anytime you do unboxing, people love it. <laughs> but that was good. You yeah. included your customers. It was a whole thing. I yeah, love that. It, was a, it was the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, what I else? put a link to the viral posting plan in the chat from, um, from the Freedom Revolution. That one's a little intense. But um, I don't know, I'm curious what Jennifer would think of the viral posting plan. If you've ever checked that out. It seems I like, like it. Yeah? 
I like it, especially if you're comfortable posting every day. Um, for new people, if they're not comfortable posting every day, then I would just have them pick a few things that stand out to them. Like it's not hard to find an inspiration post. It's not hard to um, put some, put a picture of something that's important to you. Um, and then I just get them used to posting a few times a week until they're ready to post every day. And there's nothing that says you have to post every day because I always remind people social media is not your business. Social media just lets people get to know you and it opens you up to meeting new people. And that's just you build your business by having conversations offline and building relationships offline. So just be careful that you're not spending so much time on social media thinking that's actually building your business and that it's not. Yeah, there's not necessarily, I mean, if you kind of look at all the people posting, some people are like really, I don't know, I think of it as a, like aggressive with their posts where it's almost almost like the the hair product people where it's like flash sale Friday, one, your only chance ever to get this, you know? And it's like, oh, you know, it's, it's cringy. Um, that's an extreme, uh, but there's not necessarily a correlation. Like the people that post more hand posts with their juice plus, guess what I'm taking today? Or these little babies have saved me again. You know, like um, that's even curiosity to say that, but some people are literally like, spamming their wall with like juice plus it's almost like sales posts that though that isn't necessarily working just so everybody knows it's not so just be careful there are some people that post more yeah, than and others was, go ahead i wonder go ahead jimmy yeah i was gonna say i want to touch on that uh, real quick because i kind of took a, a small hiatus from instagram about last week and what i noticed is that for my clients, personal training, uh, nutrition clients, caretaking, whatever it is, 95% of my clients, I know them from face-to-face -face interaction. I know them from real life. Very small amount of my clients actually come from social media. Though I do have a business social media, it's, it's like exactly what you're saying. Don't forget about real life interactions because you're not guaranteed 100% social media buy-in, you know? So it's a good thing to understand that too, that real life face-to-face -face conversations, phone calls, I've got a really, a, a quite amount of new orders from phone calls as well. So there are other avenues uh, to diversify and not to put all your eggs in one social media basket. Yeah, the real, the real power of the social media whole thing is, it doesn't matter if you're doing like, if Jennifer does like kite posts, that's still going to build her Juice Plus business because she, people are going to respond to it and then just like Gwen said, she's going to just have conversations with, oh my gosh, I saw you posted on my kite post. I haven't talked to you in years. How's it been going? How's the family? Then you just let them talk. Now you're just having a relationship with people. So it's about having relationships. That's why I'm a proponent of adding, I feel like another part of the, the social media strategy should be that you're adding people. A lot of people, I, I see some people, some of you guys have like three, four, 500 friends and I realize you don't really know the other people you might add, but you do kind of like if, if you meet somebody and you're in New York city and you meet somebody that's a friend of a friend and you figure it out, you're going to be like, Oh my gosh, that's such a small world. Well, it is a small world. Add everybody on social media. I think you should be trying to hit thousands and thousands of friends because then when you do your posts, you're more people are potentially have the opportunity to see it. Correct me if I'm wrong, I'm no expert. Yeah, that's true. And especially when you when you comment on their posts first, mm -hmm. you know, as soon as it's it's a challenge for me because when I'm ready to post, I want to post and get and get off. And then I have to tell yeah. myself, you know, okay, like this person's comment on several people first before I post, just so that the algorithm will pick it up. And don't forget too that. Before you talk, if there's somebody on your list, like for me, it's on my cold list. The cold list is people I want to talk to. I would never, if I'm going to talk to Jennifer, I would never just send an instant message to Jennifer and say, hey, Jennifer, how's it going? We're having this event tonight, blah, 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 blah. But if I would have went onto her wall, I would realize that somebody she's really close to is on a ventilator in the hospital or something. You know, it's like now's not the time to invite to that event, you know? So make sure you kind of like 
you know, scout them out a little bit before you do that. Also look at your previous message history and things like that. All right, what's some other good tips for new people on social? Or a question anybody might have. Uh, I would say another good tip for new, uh, new people on social would be to take the product. I mean, take the product. So now when you're sharing it, you're just sharing from your own, it's your own new excitement. Again, it goes back to that energy of excitement. A lot of people that take this product starting out, you're really excited about it. So you sharing from that perspective is uh, you're sharing from something that you're taking, something that you're doing, not this new company that you're trying to sell something for. Be the product, exactly. So I think that's something great for new um, partners is to take the product and want to share it. I think that's, that's great. It becomes authentic. It's all about authenticity. When you try to sell, 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 you kind of seem a little, you know, a little hasty authenticity is like oh i can tell they're not pushy this is just something that they enjoy to do they enjoy taking it and they're just sharing it with me so you can only do that if you have the product yourself i think that's such a strong point jimmy of being being excited and having the energy because people we are you know like attracts like vibrations attract vibrations and people can you know the example i always give is did you see that new movie? Oh man, it was so good. You got to see the movie as opposed to, did you see the new movie? You know, the energy is not there. <laughs> so if, if you're genuinely excited about it and you really genuinely would like to share how you feel about it, it's going to come through. That's a really strong point. Thanks. Well, let's hear from some people who haven't spoken up. Hate to put that pressure on you, but I'm sure you're thinking of something, whether it's your next post or some questions um, that you might have or your excitement. Maybe you could relate to something somebody else said. Um, is there anything you guys want to say or ask? It could be about social media. It could be about being a new person and whatever, Ms. Sakura. Hi, I can add something. Right. That, hi, <laughs> you can, um, so I noticed that when I post about just being in the gym and how I feel and all this energy that I got, not even talking about the product or I'll, I'll just show capsules, people see it. Even if they don't like it, they don't post it. When I talk to them, like, yes, I saw that stuff you were posting about. I'm like, I had no idea because you didn't like, you didn't comment, you didn't do anything, but you, you were still watching. So it's good that we do post things because people do watch. And when you have a conversation, they're like, oh yeah, I saw it. So this is not the first exposure. It's like the second or third exposure to them. So that's, that's cool. really good. I love that. That's so true. People are always watching, even though you might not know that. They're always keeping tabs. Like you pop up on their newsfeed. You know, you show up somewhere in the newsfeed. So they see it. They might not interact, but they know you're there. And if we share that, you know, we're getting healthy, like we share something like that, or we share that we're enjoying whatever, people are attracted to that. And they're like, they want to do what you're doing, not do what you're doing, but they want to see what, what's going on in, in their life. So when you do have those conversations in person, that's happened to me too a couple of times. Someone at work when I was in, back in South Florida, she was like, oh, I've been seeing you do this. What are you, what are you doing? You know, they asked me questions because they saw somewhere that I was posting about being healthy or about me doing something fun or whatever, you know? So I like that. I like that too. I have an interesting thing that I just, I stumbled. Well, I mean, I knew about it, but an example of uh, something in social media. So this morning, just because I, I knew we were going to be talking about this again, and Jennifer showed us how to do reels. I had never done a reel. Yeah. I know nothing about reels. So I did a reel with my golf cart this morning. And just because they make us paint it blue for the golf course. But if you're from Florida, you know, the, the Florida Gators are blue. The Seminoles are guarded in gold. We're Seminoles. I don't really like driving a blue golf cart. So I put a Florida State emblem on the front anyway. And then I just did a little, I played the Florida State war chant in the background. I selected my music and I showed my blue golf cart. And then I went around to the Florida State emblem. But I hashtagged FSU and hashtag go Knowles. 
And um, I only have about a thousand followers or so, but I have in three hours, almost 4,000 views of that video. So that's pretty cool. I should have thought about it more. And it makes (laughs) you think like, man, if you just, what networks are you in? Like Patrick in the golf world or what college did you go to or what high school did you go to or anything, anything you're passionate about, you could post something that's health related instead of golf cart related that still shows off like college football. When, you know, the first game comes, I could have like a Florida state mascot on my tower garden, you know, and people would love that. And then they'd be like, what the heck is that thing? So it's, it's good. It got my mind thinking and I just can't believe how powerful the hashtags are because I only have 23 views on my um, feed, but the reel has almost 4,000. So that's pretty significant because even, even non-followers would still get quote notified on the, the feed if they were searching the hashtag, but nobody searches hashtags for the most part. You know, I mean, they do, but not really, but on a reel, and it's going to be like you said, like TikTok is going to show up for somebody. That's pretty cool. Very, very powerful. Also, when you, I was, I haven't done lives myself. I'm trying to work up courage to do that. <laughs> but um, when you go live, like when you guys go live, it shows up on your notification for all your friends. So all of your friends see, oh, they're going live. What is this? Let me tap in. Oh, Jennifer's going live. Okay, let me. Or it shows up on your on your feed because she's your friend afterwards anyway. So you do have people watching when you post live and it is promoted a lot more, I feel like, with um, Facebook and probably Instagram. It lets you know this person is live. As opposed, it doesn't always let you know this person made a post. Oh. You know? Yeah. So I guess it does, but. Sharon sent me a message that said, tell us how you did your reel. Um, so that she could do it too. <laughs> well, maybe there's somebody else like a, has never done a reel. All I did was go to Instagram and um, and I think Je- Jennifer already showed us this, but it's pretty self-descriptive. There's a big button on the bottom and you just hit it and then you start doing a post. It was a little confusing. I kept doing a video by mistake, but then I just deleted the ones I didn't want. And Well, that's what I was wondering. Can you just do a video and then post it? Yeah, it'll let you load a video that's previously shot, but it just has to be up and down the ugly way, not horizontal. Because it sounded like you just did a video from this point to over here, and then you added music. Well, no, I did two. I did one on like down low, and then another one coming around the front, just because I wanted to use two to make sure I knew how to do it. But yeah, so what I'm working toward is like the cooking tutorials, to have like a tripod up here, shooting down to like chop, 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 chop. Da, 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 put it together, mix it, boom, and then the finished plate, and it's a recipe. So that's what I want to do with recipes and stuff. Yeah, Although capturing, I just thought, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, you capturing got it. like two to three second quick videos of whatever the process you're doing um, on your phone, and then you can just add them all into reels, add the music and the verbiage. It makes it real easy. So, like Doug saying, if he's making a recipe and he starts with the ingredients, two seconds. Um, then he starts showing it chopped two seconds, then, you know, it just shows to progression. And when you put it all together with music, it's just amazing. I know you like doing that. That's awesome. Cool. Hmm. That's a good challenge. Wow. There's a, I mean, there's a lot of, some of it's just fun too. Some people just like doing it more, right? Some people, and so that's when you see people that are on like four or five different platforms, you don't have to be on all those pick one or two that you love really focus on it. Um, but if you want to do fun stuff, anybody that's on TikTok, I'd like to learn more about that. If you want to do, I think you can do duets, right? Because I follow a lot of musicians <laughs> that do duets. We could do Tower Garden duets. What if we had Tower Garden Wars? Wouldn't that work? Like one tower on this side, one, and then let people vote on the winner or something. Why not? You know, so, or duet me with my Tower Garden, you know, so there's a lot. But yeah, we just learn as we go, you know, learn as we earn, right, Lani? right all right guys well let's go post something um i saw uh i was driving and i saw a sign that said palms 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 i don't know why it caught my eye just the repeating of palms 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 and i was on the phone and she's not on here today with kelly petrohovich and i meant to tell her because i was going to say 
you should post like, I don't know, you could post Omega, 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 or you could post lettuce, 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 if you have a tower garden. Like, I just think um, just even that alone and just a picture, like there's just so many things you could do. It doesn't have to be complicated. Mm -hmm. And and people will see it, like you're saying, Gabby and, um, and Sakura, that through the time, they'll know what you're all about. So uh, don't let that stress you out, whether you're doing reels or just a simple post. Either way, it's just a part of conversation, part of keeping you in the top of people's minds. All right, guys. I'm gonna leave, hold on a second. I'm gonna leave with them with a little bit of encouragement Good. of like how you do this business. Okay, guys. So we're buying a lot of new stuff in our new house as we decorate. Sharon, show the new kitchen, ta the dining table over there. Oh. But so we had the old dining table. Might as well give oh, yeah. it to them. Okay. So um, she sold the old dining table for a hundred bucks. And today's the day that this co young couple came over. And um, well, we see the chairs. Anyway, that's good. Thanks, Sharon. Um, so we sell the old one. <clears throat> old one. They come over, and um, of course, I knew it's going to happen. Nobody escapes the Ferrari house without getting the Juice Plus stories, right? So <laughs> sure enough, um, I'm helping the guy load up. The girl's picking the chair she wants. I go back to my tower gardens because apparently everything's different in Jacksonville. I put two tower gardens of lettuce up and they're completely overgrown and bolting. I can't even eat it. I have to give away lettuce. So I get out two heads of lettuce for them. By the time I get back, Sharon's already got them. They're in the house and now she's giving shake samples and chewables and I'm giving them lettuce. They're looking at the tower gardens and it's just, you know, if you, so you're going to, you're going to meet somebody today and just whoever gets within three feet of you, if you're just having a good conversation, because I heard the conversation, it's like, oh, you guys are young. You're decorating your house. Did you just move here? Oh, you moved over from the West Coast of Florida. What are you guys doing? Oh, you're going to college. Cool. We got a kid in college. Blah, 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 blah. What are you studying? Uh -huh. Oh, have you ever heard of, ever thought about like doing your own business? The other girl's like, oh, yeah, I like doing like artwork of dogs and cats. And like that. Oh, have you ever heard of Juice Plus? You know, why not? Oh, I do, or I do my own business too. It's called Juice Plus. Have you ever heard of it? And once they say no, boom, you tell them what it is. Now you're telling them what it is. Oh, and there's a business too. And then blah, blah, blah. And you tell them your story. And it's just, anytime you have a chance to tell your story. So be bold, guys. It's not weird. It's normal. All right. Let's Thanks, go dog. All right. <laughs> Great job today, Sharon, on that one, by the way. Thanks, though. Appreciate it. All right. We'll see you guys later. Thanks. Take care. Adios. Bye, everybody. Keep a lookout on Team Transformers. Hey, We've got a new schedule. Hey, Sunday Real night, quick. it's the planning meeting. Sunday night, uh, 8 p.m. Eastern is going to be our DMO planning meeting for East Coast. I think, I don't know if Stacy's going to do it every week, but she had one last week at 8 p.m. West Coast or Central, something like that. Oh, yeah, ah. that's right after our team meeting, which is at 7.30. Perfect. It usually goes to almost eight, so we'll have to cut it short. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, are you starting the blitz? The blitz starts Monday, next Monday and Thursday, 8 a.m. Eastern, Blitzy Blitz. Okay. <laughs> Good. Yep. All right. Miss Go you ahead, guys Katie. on the blitz. Miss the blitz. Blitz will be here. Same, same old, same old. Okay. Bye, everybody. All right. Jimmy, what'd you have? Yeah, um, you guys, you and Sharon did a call the other night and uh, I'm trying to find that. You had said something, I can't remember what you said, but it just hit a light bulb for me and I got to get that uh, that call. I think that was like Monday or Tuesday night. Do you remember? What did we do Didn't Monday, Sharon? Sharon? Was that um, the Orlowski team level up business Zoom with Melissa, maybe? Who recorded uh, I think that? I think I still have the flyer. Maybe I can send it to you so I can give you the exact. Well, video. that's the only thing we did Monday, so it's got to be that. Yeah, I'll I'll try and get um the recording of that one. Okay, cool. If you can, that'd be awesome. All right. Yeah, I'll do All that. Right. I wish I remembered it. what it was. Yeah, no problem. Next yeah, time, I'll try while, to if the I title I figure if I just talk enough, I'll get lucky and say something good. You did. You did that night. <laughs> All right.
All right. <laughs> Gwen, look at that. You got right, some man. real stuff going on. All right, take care. Yeah, we had a business deal with Richard Petty. So my whole garage is lined with Richard Petty stuff. Oh, yeah, that's right. When you were selling um, corn dogs or something. Chicken on a stick. Chicken on a stick. That's right. Up there. That. Hey, there it is. <laughs> I bet that was, was good. It was Heck damn yeah. good. I wish we still had it. <laughs> it was keto. It was. Heck yeah, man. Oh, sure. It was, uh, except uh, except for the canola oil and the gluten. Oh, yeah. Well, you could redo it. Maybe yep. have it stuffed with um, spinach. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Gwen could do it. Decora. I make it almost the same anyway. You're looking good. You look healthy. Very oh, good. thank you. Yeah, you're doing great. All right, guys. All right, I got to eat and then pick up uh, the princess here. All right, we'll see you guys. Yeah.